Angie Martinez in Real Life Podcast. Chapter one, we're all gonna die. This episode and conversation is powered by Duce. We were supposed to shoot in Jersey. Brittany found this at the last minute. Thank God. I know. And I'm ready. At least I'm a good excuse. Mad killing happened today. They killed a grandmother at a graduation and she wasn't even involved in the fight. The kids start fighting and somehow the grandmother got killed. Oh my God. In New Orleans. Then, well, this woman is not dead, but the police, they done shot a pregnant Pregnant woman five times. Crazy. What happens? You get like alerts or people call you or? They start blowing. So I've been telling people online, I'm tired and like I can't. I I can't deal with everything every minute, every day. I can't. So people were sending me messages today like, listen, I know you said you're tired, but but the shit is going down. Like, can you come back to work today? Like, we need to hear from you right away because people are trying to organize like which way. People don't even know which thing to get. Like, they like, do we fight this violence, that violence over here, over here? They don't know. Aww. They don't. They do not know. But baby, you, you're not. A, I, I'm not, and I'm not going to be. Okay. That's why I tell them no. I, I feel like you say those words. No, I haven't done anything all weekend. I swear. Okay. I have to stop because they won't. The the, the, the things we deal with, it won't stop. The need is never. It's never going to go gonna away. End. So it's the never going to go ends. away. All right, sounds good. Is she mic'd already? Oh, you mic'd already. Yeah. Good. Okay. You look good, baby. I feel good. I'm good. I'm blessed, and you know that's the other thing. It's like God is just so good oh i'm taking my glasses off he's really good too especially when you're on wait, when you're on track oh right you feel when like, you're doing exactly what you're supposed, supposed to be doing, doing. it shows up in the like craziest way i have one of your quotes i want to start with today all right let's do it i'm gonna start our interview today <laughs> tamika mallory <laughs> i'm so happy you're here i can't believe it i'm so I'm happy like, you're here this is big i worry about when we're like i have a plan to do something yeah. or i'm i because something comes up every day Every day. So knowing Today. that you could be somewhere, that could easily be changed, changed or All canceled. The time. People who are close to me, who are like real supporters of mine, family members and friends, they know that. And yeah. they have, they've accepted it. And it's like, they encourage me to take yeah. care of what I have to take care of. Except my mother. She's like, I don't give a damn. <laughs> you will show up for me. You show <laughs> you up for said. the whole world, but you gonna show up for <laughs> That's me. That's right. <laughs> so I want to start with a quote, this, this interview with something I saw in your book. That oh. it brought me right to uh, to this conversation today, and I shared a little bit with you about you this series and this you podcast did. and this uh, moment that I'm in and these conversations that I want to have. Um, have you made up your mind to keep it going forever? I don't know. No, I, I really um, I don't know. I'm trying to be in the moment with it. This might be the first project in my life where I am really letting it happen. Mm. So like when I saw you at the what event were we were at, the we were at an event. We were at an event, yeah. and it, it hadn't even occurred to me to talk to you about it. Yeah. And then we sat down and started talking about why, life. Why did we even talk we about We were talking this? about life. We we were just talking. We were kicking it about life, and you were like, "Oh, isn't that weird?" Because do you do do that often with people or no? No. Right. My personal business. <laughs> Hell no. You were like telling me. Personal. I was telling you like, I mean, we, whatever it was, it yeah. required like a, it's you. So I just gave you a real answer to like, I don't even know. And then we started talking about what I've been dealing with. Mm-hmm. We were, I know what we were talking about, but that's not for today. But we were okay. talking about another one of our sisters that has been going through some things. Publicly. And mm-hmm. publicly. And I said, oh, I know all about that. And do you remember? And I began to, you'd be like, yeah, that was crazy. What you went through, talking about my situation where I went through like a public disaster. And then um, and then I told you about how dark it got, mm-hmm. you know. Which and, I definitely yes. want to yeah. get into it today, which you're okay to talk yeah, about today sure, too, right? Sure, sure. But then that led me to like, um, telling you about this and it all naturally yeah. organically like you when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're on the right track it, everything just kind of leads you there it's so exactly weird right. it's almost like an experiment for me this project yeah. <laughs> anyway so i want to start this with this quote from your book and you say a walk of uh the walk of activism is taxing physically mentally emotionally the things i witness in the chaos of this fight haunt me i live in a state of outrage physical sometimes emotional always when I read that, it haunted me a little bit for you. Wow. Because I think about you and I think about people like you who do this work, this, this work that we admire so much, but also it's so interesting how you choose to walk through life. Like mm-hmm. in this conversation that we're, we're having about, you know, the fact that we're all gonna die and that our time here is limited. You choose your time here. I did not choose this. 
I've tried to run from this. What? How? Many times. I don't believe you. Well, because I, my <laughs> skills are transferable, right? Like, so I don't have to be an activist. I'm, I'm, I'm smart. And well, not that activists aren't. We're probably some of the most brilliant strategists in yeah. the world. Mm -hmm. But I could take my skills to corporate America. I could be in entertainment business. I could be doing a million things. And I've tried several times to walk away because first of all, working with and for black and brown folks and the marginalized like community, if you will, mm -hmm. is hard as hell. Mm -hmm. The most judgment, the most challenge, and just the most pain because it's just so much. You got you're dealing with trauma every single day, um, whether it's internal or external. And so there have been times when I get really frustrated and I'm like, you know what, fuck this. Like, I'm out. Like, yeah. why, why am I doing this to myself? Yeah. And then there, it's like, I don't even know how it happens. It's just some shit happens. And it's like, next thing you know, I'm fully immersed in addressing it. And I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. I said I was moving on to a different thing. I've got mm -hmm. like an interview and a conversation. And it never, I never can, I never get, can't get out. I can't get out. I yeah. can't get out because I'm going to challenge you on that though. Mm. In the spirit of life is fragile. We are a limited time here. We choose how we wake up and we use our time and we use, our, I feel like partially you're called. No. I mean, you are called to well, it, I'm obviously, called to it. but you allow yourself somewhat to be called well, to I it. I do. No? But the thing is, you know, there are a lot of people who are doing something different than what they are they are actually supposed to be doing right and so i guess you're right in a way like i'm i choose to walk in my purpose mm -hmm. but i'm just saying that i it's it's a it's turmoil for me mm -hmm. at times i bet and i don't feel like i'm making the choice to shift i feel like there is no choice like it's a little different the I way I see it. There is no, I have no other choice because this is me. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's different from me waking up and saying, oh, I could go over here today or over here today. It's almost like if I don't do this, I die. Like I fail to live. Yeah. What is that about? Like, how does that work? How does, so the work is obviously, you don't need to explain the importance no. of the work, right? right? The, the right. work is the we work. Know what the and work we know is. it's going to never end, by the way. Never. It's always going to be Never. something to work on, something to make better. Yeah. But how does it serve you as a woman? So my son's father was killed when my son was two. Uh -huh. And Love before that. that, it was my parents' movement. And I was in it because I was told I had to be. It wasn't until my son's father was murdered that it became my own. At that point, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, what do you do with this? And I'll tell you exactly what happened to me. I never forget. It was really dark. He was killed. It was just so much happening. And I remember picking up the phone. And you know how when someone dies, everybody calls and everybody comes. So everybody was calling me and I kept hearing people say over and over again, well, you know, your cousin so-and-so was shot or such and such baby father is also dead. And this one, and it was so many stories that I was like, wait a minute, I'm not by myself here. It's a lot of people, like a lot of black men mm -hmm. that I heard about. And so I said, wait a minute, this is like an American problem, but it's not in the news. Right. It's nowhere. Mm -hmm. Now, I had been involved in the police brutality fight. I had been involved in like housing issues. It was all kind of racism in America. But it seemed that the, the issue of gun violence in our community was super quiet, whether it be national media and or people leaders. People weren't really focused on it. Mm. And so now the calling was on me because I was looking at my son like if I don't deal with this, He's next. Mm -hmm. I have to get involved. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like how I found my way to owning it, owning the movement. I think this is it. And you were already equipped it. with all this yeah, knowledge all of this the other movement. Stuff that I wasn't yeah. listening to because I was running away from home, doing God knows what, because I didn't want to yeah. do it with my, but, but they were always trying to set me up mm -hmm. in the work because they knew I needed it. And then when this thing happened, again, God aligning things exactly. So when my son's father was gone, I'm like, whoa, I think that God was trying to tell me that this is important. So I hooked up with Erica Ford, mm -hmm. who Erica. you know very well. Very well. Very, she, Angie, Angie. <laughs> she, <laughs> and A.T. Mitchell. Yeah. And we started New York City's crisis management system. And mm -hmm. at the time, I think we got the first $5 million and now it's like more than 40 million yeah. that's going to intervention programs in New York City. Good for you, mama. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about 
the feelings that you experienced though because like you say you had this loss and you turned it to to the work yeah right but is that to fulfill like um is that you're dealing with anger are you dealing with um sadness trauma nah it was a it was processing this is when i knew i was a strategist because I was like, wait a minute, we have a problem and we got to find solutions. Right. I don't even know if I was ever, right. like, I was hurt You don't even about, give yourself yeah, a Yeah, I didn't even have a time. I mean, you know, like, I, I'm not saying I don't feel because certainly I feel. And I didn't really process my son's father's passing in the right way. I processed this guy that I was with for these years and he was my dude and this is my son's father and he's dead and oh my God, I can't believe it. And then I processed what it meant in terms of his situation, the drug addiction of the parents, they didn't get the help, he got caught in the system. So that was, you know, when I went into work mode. It wasn't until my son got to be about 15 or 16. My son was two when his father was killed. Mm. So first of all, let me give them names. My son's name is Tariq mm -hmm. and his father's name is Jason. And I was, he was, Tariq was two when Jason was killed. Oh. And so it took me until my son was about 16 years old to feel, maybe 15, 15 to feel it. And the reason why was because my son boxed up against me, like mad about something. Mm. We was at it and I was like, I will kill you. And I said to myself, oh shit, I can't do anything else for this kid. Like I've given him love, I've given him all the things and I could keep doing those things. But that next level, only his father can do it or a man who is a stable committed person in his life what was he i'm um, obviously he was angry he was just he was he oh i didn't know that so i thought because my parents were involved with his life and they were co-parents and he had you know other figures yeah i thought he was fine i didn't find out until he was like depressed as hell that he even though he didn't know his father recognized that something was wrong and the comparison that he had, Angie, came from me. He, he told me one day, you have your father. You don't even know what it's like. You don't know what I'm going through. That must have hurt. It broke me to into little pieces. Mm -hmm. what, what broke me more How wasn't- How old is he when he could articulate that? He was like that? 15 years old. Wow. But what broke me wasn't so much what he said, it was that I hadn't paid attention. I thought I was doing all the things. That's what I wonder about you because sometimes and all of anybody who is, you know, career driven, successful or whatever, at whatever you do, sometimes we bury ourselves in the thing, the chase, the, you know. And so I, I wonder for you and listen, the world benefits from what you've buried yourself in. Yeah, so there's nothing, but... you know, we're grateful for that. We love you for that. But just as a woman, like and when I think and this is something I've been thinking about a lot, which is what prompted some of these conversations about like. Cause I'm always chasing something. Right. I want to be better. I want to do something new. I want to challenge myself. I want to. And then it's like, what if I only got a month left? Do I still want to be? Do I want to be chasing the thing? And what if it's like just taking a moment to kind of think, and be aware and present and choosing. I still think there's things I want to chase, but being mindful and choosing them specifically and strategically, not just running. Not just running. Because we run, right? And we chase. And I gotta imagine, especially young Tamika after that type of trauma and that type of heartache that you bury some of that pain Listen, and some of that in I didn't the work. I didn't, I didn't do right by my son, period. Mm -hmm. That's the answer. Like, I Why? hear what you're Because saying. you were buried or- Because, because I was were... working my ass off yeah. and he knows it. He yeah. understands we're good now. Yeah. Oh, but he went through hell. Mm -hmm. And that's just the, if you, if you study history, most leaders, especially in this work, which is trauma filled work, will tell you that if they could do it all over again, the relationship with their children is the main thing mm. that they would go back and fix. So what would you have done? Been more present. How? Not physically, because physically I was in and out. Mentally, I was not always there because some shit could be happening, like big things. And my son's like, mom. And I'm like, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Yeah, didn't even hear anything he said. Now, thank God my sister, was always like, even now, their relationship, she listens to him. And then mm. she's the one who taps in with me, like, yo. This is what you meant. You know that he da 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 da. And I'm like, oh, okay, shoot, thank you. You know, she <laughs> always has been nice. my backup. And I needed that, but it hurt him. Mm. And then as he got older, 
he began to articulate it to me. But the way in which he did it, which is where he and I have issues, is like, bro, I don't give a damn if I haven't been home. You still going to do X, Y, Z that that teacher says. Because, mm-hmm. you know, once he got to an age when he figured out how to maneuver, he was like, oh, I'm so, I'm depressed. You know, <laughs> oh, you know, no one has paid attention to me. But he really did have valid feelings. However, I never forget this story. So I was with this guy for eight years mm-hmm. and he was a great guy, loved my son, but just was, we just, it was, it was it. Just mm-hmm. was time for us to separate. And when I was, I went to my son and my son knew him as dad. We, we had been together all that time. So, yeah. my, so I went to my son and I said, hey, you know, how would you feel if we broke up? And he said, well, I can see something is going wrong here. He was little too. And I said to him, he must have been 10, maybe 11. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, if we break up, are you going to be okay? He said, mom, I'm with you. You mm-hmm. know, whatever you want to do, I'm with you. I, whatever, however it works, he said, I'll still see dad, but I'm with you. Fast forward to later in life, he and I get into a big blow up one day. And my son turns around and says to me, I've been with you through all your changes. And I've never complained, not even once. I've been with you. I haven't said anything, even when I suffered. And now, whatever it was, you all over me. And I still was like, oh, no, we're, we're going to stick on this point. This, this <laughs> like right here, with your child. I don't give two hoots about all that. But he was right. Yeah. He had been, he's been with me through everything that I've been through. And he, he has allowed me to be a family member at least, I don't want to say mother because I'm not aging myself, but a family member to other families. Mm -hmm. And when I wasn't necessarily being the best family member to him. Mm. That's tough. It's tough. Do you forgive yourself for that? Absolutely, because I can't control white supremacy. Mm -hmm. That's not, you know, that's not something, that's what it does. That's the point of white supremacy. It breaks down families. It takes people mentally, emotionally, and physically away from where they should be. And it takes away our happiness and our joy, which would be me and my baby being together. It would actually be me and my baby and whether or not things worked out with his father and me, but it at least would be his father being present. Mm -hmm. But because of the society we live in and the way the world is designed, it is set up to destroy, to pick apart, Mm -hmm. and to kill. And so the fact that we still stand in shoot, we doing real well here, you know? How do you, where, where, what is the the payoff for you, right? Mm. Because like what? I, I am very clear that there is none. Really? I'm very clear. I'm clear payoff. I mean, I guess the point is like, what is the benefit and how does it, benefit me is it? this is your life this is your one life right this is how you're choosing to live it i have to I, you Why? they, they like, say a woman needs seven streams of income in order to be successful i have to have five or six different things going on to be able to answer that the work that i do every day the activism work i don't know because you take steps forward steps back it hurts your own people kick your ass you get accused of stealing money, uh, being a clout ch- I mean, everything you could think of, the trolls, the this, the that. Yes, there are great moments when mm-hmm. people celebrate you, but there's a lot of pain in it. You can't fix it. You feel like you're not doing enough. There's always turmoil. But there are other things that I do that give me a sense of like hope, you know? And, and, and other things that I think I benefit from because it it allows me to exercise my mind, my friends, you know, Mm. my girls, being able to help people, those things, yes. But in terms of just being immersed in the work, every single day I'm having anxiety attacks. So I haven't figured it out. Well, I mean, what are you gonna do? No, I know, I get it. I say this with love, by the way, (laughs) I, I benefit from the work that you do in many ways, just because the world benefits from the work from that way, I'm grateful. But just as a human being, I worry for you about um, it's the, the mental health of it all. The, the mm, But then, you know, my mental health, your mental health, yeah. because you're sitting there watching the news, seeing everything that's happening, watching inflation, watching shootings and the community and all the things. Your mental health is impacted as well. Yeah. At least I'm active 
actively engaged in like something every day that makes me feel like I'm doing whatever I can do. Just like you're using your platform, right? Yeah. And my platform is being out there feeding 500 families in Buffalo yeah. just, you know, days ago. So um, I said, so I sent you a text and I said, I'm so happy to see you. I saw you in your cute little Fendi <laughs> bathing suit, which by the way, you look super fly. I'm trying to be. No, you look That's my very other thing. fly. <laughs> And I was so I was I was like, oh, she's on the beach in her Fendi bathing suit. She looks gorgeous. I was like, I'm so happy for you that you have some downtime. And your response was like, I was trying, but then they want to murder kids. They wanted to murder babies. And I thought, yeah, because we were all feeling it. But you can't even go lay on a beach mm -mm. because well, you're activated. You're not just feeling it like we feel it. We're all sad. Right. But you're ha activated. Well, that was between the, the elders and our black brothers and sisters being slaughtered in a massacre in Buffalo. Yes, that's so this is days, two days later, later. I see you days on IG later, and buying it groceries. Days later. And I'm like, right. In the middle of it, I was in um, that weekend when you saw me. The reason why I was in the bathing suit is because it was in between things happening during Sabrina Fulton. Trayvon Martin's mother, she has a conference every year where she brings together hundreds of mothers who've lost their children so to violent situations. Mm -hmm. So I was at her conference in Miami and happened, you know, it took some time to hang out when there was nothing going on. Right. So there's trauma from Buffalo. Then I'm at a conference with women who are coming up to me different, you know, and I'm helping them. I did two classes. In the midst of all of that, Good Lord. there's the killing of the children. It's like really too much. It's really too much for yeah. all of us. So I'm just saying, people look at my mental health and yes, sure, I'm close to it. I'm touching it. I'm with the families, I'm doing things. But all of our mental health, like each one of us is dealing with something, whether we admit it, acknowledge it mm -hmm. or know that it's there mm -hmm. but we're all going through it yeah like you i don't know if you recognize yourself like looking like you're in a place and it's a lot of people you like yo what's up mm -hmm. you know like <laughs> you don't know because you don't know when right, people right. are moving what that means yeah 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 that in itself we shouldn't feel like that at the grocery store in the airport or someplace like I that know. it's too much i know it's yeah. too much yeah. i know it's too much so at some point, though, Tamika, when does it become like, not, <laughs> like, no, really, because I, I want to understand what you went through. And I want people to understand because I think the people look at you like a machine, which is why you get you be, you become the activist machine. And so she should do everything perfectly and say everything perfectly. Right. No. And she should not be in a bikini or like oh. Cardi B. Oh, or, how did you know this? I know. Oh, this. OK, good. I'm yeah. glad you know. <laughs> I know. All the I read you your know. comments. Oh, OK, good. I see your comments. I see yeah. you deleting, uh, not deleting, but muting people on yeah. IG Live. Yeah, when I have to. Mode. Yeah, have because they bugged out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. But I, I just want people to get to, to know you a little bit just as a human being, yeah. man. You are an activist, yes, but you are a human being before well, there's that there's some confusion because people so dr king was a preacher and oh, oh, he was a pastor a reverend excuse mm -hmm. me a clergyman a member of the clergy um and reverend sharpton clergy mm -hmm. reverend jackson clergy also all men but whatever right um <laughs> and then they, they had wives who were the wives of clergymen and women right and then i've had people say i can't imagine harriet laying on the beach well harriet first of all didn't have social media and also she was running from the slave master so that's a whole different right. thing right. and also right. give you some grace right right, some... right right exactly so people right. but people studied that they saw those images yeah. pumped over and over again and so in their mind that's what it's supposed to look like they have not evolved to a place where, well, first of all, they don't understand that I'm just not that. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Like, I'm not, someone came on my page the other day and said, I can't, I, you know, this doesn't look like whoever. I'm like, you have to find that person's page <laughs> because that's who they are. Right. I'm actually not that. And guess what? If you go back and you, you go back to when I started on Instagram, I've always been in the bikini or hanging out, having a good time with my friends but it doesn't stop me from doing the work. Now you got people that the skirt is all the way to their ankle and you can't trust them as far as you can see them. Yeah. <laughs> so which one you want? They tell me, oh, you wear a weave. 
I know some natural hair chicks that have never stepped foot in the work that I do every day. Yeah. So instead of us worrying about who has on what and whether you in a bikini what the, or not. the package looks like. Just like, focus on, am I showing up where I'm supposed yeah. to be and doing what I'm supposed to do? I guess too, as a woman and as a human being, I'm asking, because I know you've been honest and you've shared some of your story about just how it, how dark it could get for you internally when you're home you're not doing the work yeah. and the TV is off yeah. and the phone is down. What are you dealing with? Like, what, what is that moment for well, you? Well, today is different from yesterday. So yesterday it looked like, you know, me popping 30 freaking between Xanax and, um, and, and Percocets and whatever. That's what it looked like. I mean, to cope? unfortunately, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, I was going through a really, really dark moment. And that was during the women's march. Um, which is like this really which you would think was so from high. The out, well, you would think it was a high. It was it was a low. Why it was a low? Well, first of all, because white women can be very, very, very dangerous if they haven't done the internal work, right? Mm -hmm. So there are some white women who've done the work and they are very clear of, of the, that their tears and other and uh, and of their very problematic. Um, ways in which they approach relationships mm -hmm. with black women mm -hmm. specifically and mm -hmm. black men. Yeah. So they know and they're like, I'm checking myself or I've got to be careful. Right. Even the ones that I work with that have done the work still, they're like, yo, I shouldn't have said that. Right. But oh, shoot. That's to be appreciated. That's, it, it, no, yeah, I appreciate I mean, those, those are my people. I'm yeah. close to them because they know it and because yeah. we have those conversations. But imagine that the Women's March was a combination of people who never done any work. They weren't even in the movement. They, they just one day woke up and they were like, oh, my God, Trump is the worst thing that's ever happened. He started racism. He started <laughs> everything like he started everything. Right. All women's <laughs> rights are going to be taken away all because it of packed. Trump. Right, yeah, never yeah. happened before Trump. And so they started the Women's March, these women together. And we, as women of color, black women and others, Palestinian, Mexican, American, you have Linda Sarsour, uh, Carmen Perez. Mm -hmm. We all are getting involved here with a bunch of people that you've never worked with. You don't know if you can trust them, which some of them we couldn't. Others we've grown to be best of friends with. Mm -hmm. So here I, and by the way, Carmen and Linda would have told you in 2017, right? Is that, yeah, 2017, mm -hmm. that all of us were experiencing the same trauma and it was all of us. And I sat back and watched them be like, wait a minute, they really hate black women more than anything. They thought that they, we were all going through the same stuff because they are bruised as well. Mm -hmm. They have the trauma as well. But they begin to realize that the way that I was being targeted was very different from everyone else. And it is because there's always been this particular, um, I don't want to say relationship, but this tension between black women and white women that's very, very, very specific. Only we have this relationship mm -hmm. based upon us being enslaved, you know, what that looked like mm -hmm. and the whole thing, which mm -hmm. we don't have to get in today. Right. And so I was targeted so much that what I ended up going through was much worse. It was just much worse. Now, it's not struggle Olympics because what they suffered was also terrible. But it was the way in which people were constantly trying to tear me down that it, it made me turn to like, what can I do to deal with being alone? And, you know, one one not being able to sleep one too many times turned into what can I take? Mm. And the next thing you know, and I thought I had it, un had it under control. Listen, I just, for people who are out there who are taking pills and they're at the beginning of this whole process and they think, I got it, you do not have it. Right. There is no control. It controls you, you cannot control it. Mm. I learned that, I had a friend sit with me one day and I was so, you know, it was like, Oh, I'm sleeping. I feel so much better. And I was telling her she had just been released from prison. And she said to me, oh, you taking Percocets and Xanax and all that? She said, Tamika, it's only a dark hole. There's no way you could go. And I thought I had it. I said, oh, no, 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 I'm going to. She said, I ended up calling her going into rehab. When did you know you were in the dark hole? 
when it was like 30 pills. A day? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you were taking them all day. You weren't even taking them to sleep anymore. No, I was taking them all day. So no, sleeping. Yeah, was I was I was so nodding before out. That, but, before the 30 pills, you didn't, when it was 20 pills, you didn't think, no. Oh, no, because it's not about that anymore. It's the need. Your body lets you know. At that point, you're addicted. So now you're trying to not allow a feeling of like the withdrawal to happen. Yeah. So you're like all day long trying to make sure that your body never experiences a moment of discomfort. Got it. So there were times when I would Sheesh. stop taking them for two days of like trying to take less and whatever. But then it was, I was crying, I was throwing up, I was, my stomach was hurting. It just was, it was it's a mess. And mm -hmm. Rachel Nordling is the one who took me to rehab. Wow. Took me to rehab, dropped me off. And what did you do, you just detox? Did you learn anything about yourself? Well, I already knew I was strong as hell. Like I went to rehab saying, Lord, I need help with like, I needed white people drugs. So the funny thing is that Jason Williams, <laughs> the NBA All-Star, uh -huh. he's the one that put me in oh, a rehab yeah, he has program. A, he has his rehab. Yeah, so he, he has, has one, yeah. but he sent me to a particular place. Mm. Um, he put me in there. Three times I called him, Jason, I'm in trouble. He called me back. Hey, you ready? Oh, yeah, I'm going to, oh, you know, I did all the bullshit and saying I'm going and didn't go. Finally, he, so the third time, Rachel and Jason got together and said, we have to make her go. Because yeah. at this point, I was like not going outside, you know, not really wanting to be around people. I was so depressed. I mean, I lost everything. One incident that happened with the Women's March created a situation where all my income was impacted. For the first time in my life, I sent the text message to a number of people asking for folks to send money because I didn't have. Wow. Um, that had never happened. So much so that people called to see if I had been, like my phone was taken over by aliens or something. Cause they were like, this is never like, what is this? But I was in that type of trouble. How long ago? This was, this was in 2019. It's not that long ago. It wasn't. No, this is very, very recent. Yeah. I tell people all the time when they're like, oh, you don't know. No, no, I understand. I was in a very dire situation. Um, and so uh, so, so Jason, he set me up to go to rehab. And while I was there, it wasn't so much that I learned a lot, Angie. But what I will say is that I was at the bottom. Right. Like I'm in rehab. I'm, I'm like in a dark room on these white people drugs, because they don't give black folks these types of drugs that just go to the local detox program. Mm -hmm. You go through a lot of suffering and whatnot, I know, because I checked into it. Mm -hmm. These programs- Even when you're in there, you're like, you're yeah. seeing the injustice. I saw injustice, in the rehab. I went to the program <laughs> and I was like, and then when I went to the, I'm like, uh-uh, this stuff, you almost don't even feel, right. but then you have to go home. And that's where the challenge is. While you're in there, it's it's painful and it's dark and it's all of that. But it's when you have to start coming down off of what they're treating you with that numbs you. And then you start to have to deal with yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the shit that I went through. It wasn't so in the rehab. Yeah, it was dark. I was in a dark room and I was sitting there thinking, how the hell did you? of all the people get your behind in here like you can't ever come back and that was the main that was the 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 the, the conversation in rehab was we will never ever be back here but when i got out i had to first of all i was physically weak mm. i was embarrassed my parents now knew mm. you know what i mean your exactly son knew. my son knew uh, I had to tell them because I didn't know what would happen in rehab. So I had to let them know. And that was when they first found out it was even going on mm -hmm. just days before I went in. Um, I was I was I was just sick of myself. You know, I was sick of myself. I don't know if this is OK to ask. It's OK. I guess I'm wondering if you still had hope in those moments, because people who don't have hope, they no. might they might consider. No, I, I think I was hoping that I wouldn't wake up, but I would never take my own life. However, I was working on it. What do you mean? Like the, 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 the volume of drugs that I was taking, I was working on it, but not admitting to myself mm. that I was in the process of killing me. Mm. Yeah, it you, was real dark. You weren't consciously 
trying to commit suicide, but you were also like, okay. if it happens, hey. And it wasn't because of the, it, I, you know, when I think about it and, and I try to tap in or hone in on it, it wasn't the like, oh, they took this from me and they took that from me. It was more so finding out who was really with me when I was in a dark place. Mm. That's the shit that really hurt. Because then I learned that even people I served and worked with wouldn't stand up for me. Mm. And I was like, wow, like this is real. Like you, you're biased. Why do you think yeah. God does that? I don't God freaking that, know. Yeah. Well, I tell you one thing, I'm the strongest I've ever been. Okay, so then that's probably why. So I guess that's the, re but he could have done some other. <laughs> I like, just, you know, I had that accent. Yo, I used to ask myself like, yo. you could have, I'm a smart girl. I would have paid attention. You could have given yo. me a less severe, yo. you know, situation yo. to like, you know. But, like this, but we are strong and, and kind of stubborn women. And maybe we wouldn't have gotten the whatever messages we were but supposed to get. But you know what I realized? I was going to keep it to myself. I was never going to tell anybody. Nobody needed to know. Jason wasn't going to tell anybody. Still to today, I'm like, dude, will you do an interview with me to talk about how I got in the program? He's like, yeah, well, call me. And then he didn't, I never, you know, I don't right, hear right. from Jason. He's not going to talk about it. Rachel's not going to tell anybody. She's my friend. She's not going to tell anybody anything. So nobody really had, my family wouldn't, so I would, nobody would have known. My family members do, they, some of them would probably see this and be like, what? Like they had no idea because that's how much people protect me within my family, yeah. right? So I was never going to talk about it. And then I realized one day, this is not your story. This is God's story. So how do you get to keep it? It's selfish not to, t because there is somebody. And by the way, I've helped at least four people that are high profile individuals deal with their issues mm. since they found out about mine. Drug or depression or both? Or Depression, drugs, mostly drugs. Mm. Three people with drugs and one person with just depression that needed to go somewhere and get themselves together. What is the number one thing you tell them? You don't have it under control. Mm. You have to, you gotta go to somebody else mm -hmm. to help you. You don't have it under control. Everybody says that. They start off, they tell me they have it under control. <laughs> <laughs> because we like to be in control. Yeah, they, it they, makes us feel, I don't know, I don't yeah, know more secure. You don't have it under control. Nobody does. I just wanna, before we, I have a couple of things that okay. I ask everybody in these little conversations. I love that you took a break, by the way, from, uh, I saw your post, this is your post from the other day. You took a trauma post break. Yeah, no posting of, of people dying on my page. I can't take that. You mean the actual, like, or just, oh, you took oh, just- Oh, people send me pictures of things that if you saw it, uh -huh. you would be like, what is this? People send me pictures. I have video of membrane from Buffalo wow. that I've not seen online. So I'm just saying, like people send me to me because the fact that you have all that inside your little cute little body but i don't really watch it it's like okay. as soon as i open and i see things i'm like uh, i don't watch videos mm. I, i'm at the point now where i'm like it doesn't even make sense. everybody knows it's all happening yes it's bad it's terrible it's shooting it's killing it's this that and the third it's no reason for me to have to keep posting all of that mm -hmm. what people need now is like what to do yeah where could they go so if you the post that you are talking about i'm like we have to support black led organizations because I saw that every town, um, which is a white led, or at least, yeah, it's white led. Bloomberg started it, it's white led. Gun violence prevention organization, which I think they do great work. So I'm not trying to say, and I think they should have 2 million or whatever has been raised for them over the weekend. But then you look at like Live Free and Life Camp, which is Erica and others who do this work black led um, gun violence organizations, they raise 10,000, 500, 5,000, why? Like why? And by the way, celebrities who are friends of ours are the ones pushing because they're, they're the management and the PR, like half of the time, it was Memorial weekend. Most of the people don't even know what got posted. They mm -hmm. just are like, you did, you know, they are checking with their team, make sure we're out there on this issue. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh yeah, no, got it, right? But not enough of our celebrities are looking at, well, which organization are you pushing on my socials? Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. So people like Erica and others like her, and Until Freedom, to be clear, let me mm -hmm. make sure I say my own organization we don't get the support 
but others do. Mm -hmm. So that that for me is a solution based conversation around what can we do? Yeah, I get that. It it just struck me because you said I keep wanting to post my thoughts on a lot of things, but I'm I'm not even breathing normally. Mm -mm. How do we get you breathing normally? You got to be able, like, can, do you have, can you, who can you talk to? <laughs> like, where do we start? Like, can you, I mean, like, you got to go talk to, like, the forefathers or something. Like, this is, this is but deep. But do you think you could make, like, let's say, I don't know how much time any of us have. Let's say we have, can you maintain this for your whole life? No, and I'm not going to. I oh. have young mentees that are badass. They, okay. They're badder than me. Yeah. They're smart and they're ready. Okay. And one day I'm going to be like chairman of something and, you know, doing other business ventures. Hopefully, hopefully mm-hmm. I'm able to fulfill those dreams and they're going to be leading. Mm. That won't be my problem. You know, and I think that's the woman's touch. Mm. I think that's the leadership uh, skill that women have that some of our brethren don't necessarily <laughs> right. possess. Probably they hold in e- ego. <laughs> holding until the end. <laughs> yeah, rooted in ego. Okay, a couple things. If today, this is the Steve Jobs quote that kind of inspires somewhat this conversation. If today were the last day of your life, would you want to do what you were about to do today? Yeah. I was sit- I'm sitting here with you. Aww. This is a, a big pleasure. Do you think that every day you live that way? That you do what yeah. you want to do every day? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm older now. Mm-hmm. I'm about to turn 42 in days. It's a whole new ball game. You no look one amazing, tells me, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody tells me shit yeah. now. Like, it was a time when I was running around, like, just try to serve uh, everybody mm-hmm. and now no 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 they know it too my my team they like she's living her best life i'm living <laughs> i want people to know i'm happy to hear I that i'm living my best life in Good. between working and mentoring and being there when they call me i got i have so many young people call me they're like we should do this and this i'm like do it <laughs> that's right I invite me i think about oh, this yeah. and i've asked you how i support you in your work before uh-huh, uh-huh. but I, how do we support you? How do, what do you need? A husband. <laughs> <laughs> it's about that Who time. is this man and you how know. do I find him for you? And, and, and meanwhile, I don't want one, but I want one. You know, you, I'm not ready. What part of it do you want? Well, you know, it's just time for me to <laughs> have a partner to just start building with, mm. you know what I mean? Like building, buying and figuring out life. And I, and, and I'm, and I'm, I, I have people around me that support everything I do, but it's a different level of intimacy, intimacy. you know? Mm-hmm. And so it's time for that. It's time. Are you making space but for it? No, yes. I'm not ready, but okay. I'm getting ready. Okay. I'm getting ready. I mean, I'm getting how, ready spiritually how, for it. How important is love in the equation? And of you in your full life, you know, like how important is love yeah, to you? Yeah, different in this life? type of love. Like, I mean, I don't mean your child and your family. I mean, no, I, I know I what mean you mean. Romantic, like, like romantic love. Yes, yeah. it's time. It's time. Like you, do you value that, or yeah. do you like if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I'm fine. If it's gonna be problematic, I'm good. Uh-huh. If it's gonna be stress and drama and whatever, I'm good. I like, don't could, need Are it. you one of those women that could live a happy I life? I could live fine yeah. without it. Mm-hmm. But I'm ready to try. Um, I need to try. She said a husband. Uh, husband. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I can, I can call you on any given Tuesday. Like, yo, yeah. Angie, I need you to do this about this. And I need that. And can you yeah, make yeah. it? But the, the tough shit is like, can, can you help, help me? me find my husband? <laughs> I have that conversation with many of my girlfriends. I know. And I have it. yet to fully. I make good suggestions. But I have yet to I have a full. few people. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm like, this is good you know, for you. You need to hook up yourself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know and there's yourself. a few prospects, but, you know, it's They got to be able to keep up. How- well, they have to be able, they got to be mature, mature enough to know just what I said when we started, that sometimes I just got to go. Mm. And then when I'm gone, it's like a world. It's like It's not like I'm gone, but I'm on the phone with you all day. I can't. Right. I'm not that girl. Yeah. 
right? Like, and there's that girl, but I'm not her. Yeah. I'm like, but you know, and I and I need to know that I could trust you, and we could still build, even though there's a lot of like movement, mm-hmm. and that's not easy to find because some because wow. people need what they need. Okay, um, let me talk about the title of this one second. Is uh, we're all gonna die? How does that thought make you feel? Are you somebody who's afraid of death? There's no way. I couldn't do what I do. Uh-huh. I, I had to accept a long time ago, death is very possible. Yeah. And only because this is being broadcast, I won't tell you what my biggest fear of how I could die, because I do have that, like, Lord, just don't let it be this way. Uh-huh. But otherwise, I expect that at any given moment, it could happen. You think about it. I, 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 I don't even think about it anymore. Now, because to think about it is to hesitate mm-hmm. to move. Yeah. And I don't I can't. Now, as I get older, though, the younger people that work with me, I'm concerned for them more like you shouldn't wait. Maybe yeah, yeah. don't because I'm getting older, you know, yeah. so it's just natural. Yeah. But the hesitation of we might die. I don't have that as much as I used to. Do you have the fear because you had the trauma of losing someone you love? Especially. And I almost died myself. Yeah. So do you worry about other people? Because I remember when I, like after I had my car accident. I would literally have pain in my chest. My mother would be like, I'm going to the store. I'm getting in the car. Yeah. My mother in the car, my son in the car. It, it, the trauma of I that. I worry about my yeah. son mm. a lot. Mm. Too much, probably. He's yeah, but I think that's a mother it. thing. Yeah, no, but it's different. Yeah, because you because see so I, many mothers. Well, no, I think somebody may use him against me. Uh-huh. You know, so I worry about that. Well, we will pray up for him. Yeah, we, well, you yeah. know, he's there. They, they have prayer circles about my child. But I will say that, thank you for that. Um, Now that the elders were shot at the grocery store, that really messed me up. Because my parents, that's their day. They go to the grocery store, they go to the Dollar General. The Dollar General is like like Mm an outing Mm -hmm. for my mom and her friends. And to think that something like that could happen, even though we already know, but you don't know, and we should never normalize it where we're like, oh, of course, no, it's not okay. That does make me feel concerned. There is so much happening that people don't even know. Like Like I said, the emails, the texts, the things that I receive with stories from around the nation of all kinds of incidents that, yeah, that does worry me because I know how real it is. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like at your house, but you don't know it because you're living in this bliss of your world. Mm-hmm. And it's actually possible at any moment in any space. And it's getting closer and closer and closer. You think the people in Buffalo thought that they were gonna shoot up the grocery store? Do you think for one minute that children Immigrant children, for the most part, I mean, I'm sure, you know, many of them were born here, but still there were Mm -hmm. a lot of immigrant families Mm -hmm. in the school in Texas. You think they think they thought that another young man that looked like them would come in there and shoot children and that the police would just let it happen for over an hour? Mm -hmm. No, no. So while you are here, Tamika Mallory, Mm -hmm. what can I do? No. What is your purpose? I think that my purpose is to never allow the behavior of like the 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 the, the disgusting behavior of this nation to go silently just mm-hmm. to let it happen without someone being here to speak truth to power. Mm-hmm. I think when I was in school as a kid, I used to talk all the time. And my parents would be like, you and that mouth. I used to hear all the time, that mouth. You need to learn how to be quiet, you know? And imagine, like, at that time, it was a, I was a nuisance because I was talking at times when I shouldn't have been. But maybe I should have. And maybe someone should have invested in me running my mouth, right? <laughs> because look at me now. I run my mouth for a living. And, you know, now I, I realize that that was actually the gift that God gave me was to say what others are afraid to say. Mm. And here I am. Here you are. <laughs> do you think about your legacy a lot? Like, do you think about, because we've lost a lot of people, even in hip hop culture, yeah. we've lost artists. And you yeah. know, I, sometimes, and maybe I think about this type of stuff too much, but like, 
you know, we see people that we love, beloved yeah. uh, fi figures, and they're gone. Yep. And we have two days of Instagram posts. That's it. And then it's, there's maybe a year later on the anniversary, yep. there's a post or two. Mm -hmm. And then I think about, well, what, what did they, what did it mean? What, what, they worked so hard. They did all these things. Like, what, what does it mean? And so I, I wonder for you, like, what do you hope that your life will mean? Well, I'm very clear that the afterlife is cool, but it's the now, the here and the now that makes your story. Like when you think about someone like, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, there are people that even, you know, they don't have just two days. They have a lot yeah. more, um, uh, not celebration, but commemoration yeah. that happens around their lives. And, and those, those lives. And that is because of the work that, that they've do. done. Mm -hmm. The meaningful no, there work. Are, there definitely are Meaningful people are. work. Do you wish to and be so looked at that? I hope that I am one that when I pass on, that the story that people tell, that little dash between when I was born and when I died, that it's one that's worthy of, uh, you know, great celebration, you know, uh, that it's worthy of, just kind words and continued feelings and of people continuing the legacy, building institution where things about what I did and how I organized my books are used uh, to teach. Mm. Like that's really what I hope is that there are young activists and young leaders that say, you know what, I like it where you can be in the street and have a bikini on at the same time. <laughs> right, somebody can take that Can I themselves. do that? Okay, so, yeah. I, so no longer am I boxed into this. I can be whatever it is that I wanna be. Mm -hmm. I could be gay, I could be trans, I could be whatever it is. I could be in a bikini, I could be, I could be a dancer, I could be a stripper doesn't mean that I can't get up the next day and say, oh, I care about black people. I care about brown people. I care about injustice. That's my people. So when folks say, oh, and then I have to tell people when they're like, oh, you shouldn't dress this way. and You shouldn't do this. I'm like, you actually think I'm, I'm talking to the wrong audience. You haven't figured it out yet. You think that I'm trying to appeal to you and I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. looking for Ray Ray and Keisha. Mm -hmm. Street corners strip clubs, mm -hmm. that's who I want to say, she helped liberate B. Mm -hmm. That's my niche. Mm -hmm. And every day it's a process, but it's what I want to be remembered for. You've already done enough. Yeah. You have, Tamika. What, it's what they call, uh, what you have, have you done for me lately? No, I mean, <laughs> keep, keep doing it because it clearly fills you up and you clearly feel purpose in it and, you sh and we're grateful for the work you do. But I'm just saying, if you decided tomorrow to mm -hmm. retire, you have done enough. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, thank you. I don't you. know if I feel it. I know you don't. And I'm glad you we don't. Not, do you feel you've done enough? No, of course, of course not. not. Okay, good. So of we're together. Not. I have, feel but like you I have. definitely have done enough. I never feel like that. I always oh feel my God. like, no. Angie, like, no. If I, if I felt like that, we wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation, <laughs> sharing your story, right? True. Is there anything in your life you haven't done that you want to do besides the husband? Is there a bucket list item for you? Um, so now I think it's all about traveling because I've done it. I've been to the White House. I've been honored at the highest level. Listen, Puff had me on the Billboard Awards. Uh, no, you you know nice what I'm saying? Moment. Like, what are you going to do? Like, yeah. I've, had, I've been honored by everybody. NAACP, you name it. Yeah. The, the community group, the Congressional Black Caucus, yes. the, everybody. They had Webby Award. Look, Time 100 Most powerful people and fortunes 50 most influential <laughs> talk like, talk i mean <laughs> everything you can think of i've had it i've been honored by my family friends so now it's like where do i go that i can learn more and and put more in me that's what that's the bucket mm. list the bucket list is about my personal development because i've done all i can do in terms of proving that I care about the world. Mm -hmm. But I haven't necessarily proved to myself how much I love her. Mm. Are you working on that? That's my, that's okay. my new thing. <laughs> what do you ask God and for? And the husband. And the husband. So he ain't gonna fix that. You gotta fix that. I, don't, I think you gotta fix that no, first. No, it's a process. And then the husband's gonna But I'm actually gonna go. good. I'm doing it. It's good. a process. It's happening. Good. It's a process. Proving it doesn't mean that it hasn't begun and that I don't understand it. Yeah. Proving it is, okay, so, you, so we love you. Okay, we love her. 
Show me. Yeah. And I'm in that show her show me. time. Yeah. What do you ask God for most? My mom and dad to just live peacefully. And when their time is up, to just let it be peaceful and let them just know that we we appreciate them for everything they sacrifice to make us who we are. Mm. It's, it's all about me. My The thing I say to God every day is let them go out of here with it in their heart that they put everything they could. They came from the bottom. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They came from humble, humble, humble beginnings. My mom was in Alabama. My daddy was in North Carolina. They came to New York with nothing and they figured it out and look at their children. My sister has three degrees. Wow. You know, my brother has a beautiful family. My sister in North Carolina, beautiful. And then there's me that they all celebrate, they hold me up. Imagine two people who had limited education that came here from the South, the Jim Crow South, that made it possible for us to be in the situation we're in, that I could stand in front of five million people around the world and speak. That's almost impossible. But I did it from the projects in <laughs> Harlem. Only mommy and daddy could make that happen. They must be so proud of you. They are just over the moon. <laughs> but nonetheless, That's my mother's you... like, yeah, you, you cute, but you ain't that cute. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to show up for me. That's right. And that's what you pray and for. And I do that. Yeah, that's what I pray for. God, help me have the means and the mind to give them what they need. That's not all about money because they got their own money. Yeah. So it's not about that. It's about the, the being able to think to help them keep you know young and on track because they're like hey need you to read these papers with this thing say my dad's like what this say you know what, I mean? what i'm supposed to do over here you want to keep them around and making them, them feel mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. and making them feel loved that's for me that's the biggest thing beautiful thank you baby thank you Angie. you're amazing thank you mm -hmm.